What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 42nd jailbreak update video and it's been a while. So in this episode, we're gonna be talking about a new 10.2.1 jailbreak, the supposed jailbreak team that I talked about back in episode 41, Apple killing iOS 10.3.3 and iOS 11 and more. Right, so first of all, you guys know that the jailbreak scene has been pretty quiet lately. There hasn't really been much talk about it. It's been all about the new iPhones coming out and things like that, the Note, all that stuff. So the jailbreak scene has been kind of in a low spot. You know, I haven't really talked about it on the channel much either, but things have just recently started to pick back up again. So first of all, just as a refresher, in case you guys did forget, we do have multiple exploits out there that are public for iOS 10.3.1 and 10.3.2. We have Triple Fetch from Google's Project Zero, which works on iOS 10.3.2 and below. And if you wanna know all the details basically about Triple Fetch, go back and watch episode 38, my jailbreak update video, episode 38. I go extremely in depth about Triple Fetch. Then we have Ziva, which is Adam Donenfeld's iOS 10.3.1 kernel exploit. So this is the most promising one. And I talked about this as well extensively back in episode 40. We also have Extra Recipe, which has been out for quite a while. But the interesting thing about that is that it can also work for 10.3.1. 2.1. And I did make a video tutorial on this as well using the iPhone 7. So we have all three of those and now we have Saigon, which is simply Triple Fetch, Ziva, and Extra Recipe compiled into one IPA and released as a 10.2.1 jailbreak on GitHub. So basically an unknown developer that's not even known in the community combined all of these exploits, basically compiled them all together and made a jailbreak out of it and released it. Now I will say that I did test this out on my iPhone 5S, which I do have running iOS 10.2.1 and it actually failed. However, since this is is open source and the source code is just available for everybody, that's very promising because other security researchers and other developers can go out there and tweak minor things in this and potentially have a fully working jailbreak, at least a more stable jailbreak. And if you're wondering how it works, it was actually explained in a Reddit post right here. So triple fetch runs when hitting the jailbreak button, then passes the privilege port to Ziva to allow connection with the buggy driver, aka sandbox escaping. Once Ziva runs, it'll run the KPP portion of extra recipe. And if successful, Cydia will be installed on your device. Now, unfortunately for me, it was not successful on my iPhone 5S running 10.2.1, but I will update you guys if it does get working eventually. And I will say that if you want to try this out for yourself, I would highly recommend you use the Xcode version. If you run it in Xcode and compile it through Xcode, definitely do that instead of dragging the IPA over Cydia Impactor. You have a much higher chance of success and it was even noted in the Reddit post as well. And as I mentioned, I will keep you guys updated if it does end up working on my 5S. And if anything new comes from this at all, I will also leave the links down below in the description to the GitHub page and the Reddit post so you can read all about it and learn more about this jailbreak. So if you are on 10.2.1, definitely check it out and let me know in a comment down below if it did work for you. Now let's turn our heads to Tim Starr, who's been extremely active in the community, one of the best community members we have right now, who's actually been releasing multiple things in 2017. He actually just released an update for his ETA Sun jailbreak. So if you didn't know, this is a jailbreak for iOS 8.4.1 and it works for all 32-bit devices. And that's after today's update, which added support for the iPhone 5 and the iPad 4. I'm not going to talk much about this at all, but if you are interested in this jailbreak, definitely click the link down in the description below to check it out and learn more about it. So now let's quickly talk about the jailbreak team that I talked about back in episode 41. I didn't want to talk about these guys again, but I realized after watching that video that I didn't actually, you know, make a follow-up video saying if they were real or not. So if you missed that video, there was a supposed jailbreak team called the Zig team, which ended up being fake. I'll just spoil it right now for you, but they were supposed to release a jailbreak for iOS 10.3 through 10.3.3. And back in my video episode 41, I said how they're almost definitely fake and not to trust anything they say. And it turns out, obviously, they were fake. There's not really much more to add to this segment other than just don't believe everything you see on Twitter. Actually, don't believe anything you see on Twitter unless you see me retweet it or post a video about it on YouTube saying that they might be real or something like that. You know, the Zig team, I said that they're probably 99.9% .9 fake and not to believe them. But the only reason there was a sliver of a chance that they were real is because they were followed by some important members of the community. But still, don't believe anything you see on Twitter because there's a good chance it is fake. And then finally, after what seems like forever, Apple eventually stopped signing iOS 10.3.3 and iOS 11.0 yesterday. So of course, that means you can no longer downgrade to these firmwares via iTunes, making iOS 11.0.1 the lowest possible firmware to restore to now. So hopefully you all remember to save your SHSH2 blobs for iOS 10.3.3 and iOS 11.0 because you just never know when they can come in handy. Now let's turn our attention back to iOS 10.3.x, more specifically iOS 10.3.1 and iOS 10.3.2, since I know most of you guys are probably on one of those two firmwares. So if you are on iOS 10.3.1 or 10.3.2, you are in a pretty good spot as a jailbreak for iOS 10.3.3 and above is pretty far out. I mean, we don't have any public exploits at all for 10.3.3 or iOS 11. Now, as for when you're actually going to get a jailbreak for 10.3.1 and 10.3.2, literally nobody on this earth knows. So it looks like iOS 10.2.1 did get a jailbreak before iOS 10.3.x, but that was pretty much expected. Almost everybody expected that. However, I would still say 
that there's a good chance that we get a 10.3 point X jailbreak, I, I think there's a better chance than not that we do eventually get a jailbreak for 10.3.1 and 10.3.2. Just not for 10.3.3 or iOS 11. I think it's way too early to even think about that. Now, the best thing for you guys to do on iOS 10.3.x is just to remain patient. You know, I've said this a lot in the past, but just don't expect a jailbreak. You know, just let it come. Let it be a surprise if it does come, but don't, you know, constantly be waking up every day checking for a jailbreak because you're just going to be disappointed day in and day out and eventually lose hope. So just stay patient, keep using your device as it is, and your day will eventually come and it'll pay off. As for the doubters out there, and I know they're going to be in the comment section down below already, but iOS 8.4.1 was released two years ago, and just this year, just recently, it got a jailbreak. So time is not the only factor, and there's always hope. And lastly, I just wanted to mention that Apple recently open sourced the kernel for every iOS version from 1.0 all the way up to iOS 11. And this is gonna potentially make it easier for security researchers to find vulnerabilities inside of the iOS software. As for how much this is gonna help for future jailbreaks, I honestly don't know. I can't imagine it's gonna be a major breakthrough. It's not gonna be anything major that's gonna make jailbreak super simple or anything, but I think it could help somewhat in the future with jailbreaks. Time will tell on this. It just recently happened, so we'll kind of have to wait and see what comes with that. But anyways, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or concerns or anything you want to say down in the comment section down below, make sure to leave a comment. You guys know I reply to almost all comments. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.